Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Lucky Number Game from the January 2019 Long Challenge. The problem states Bob and Alice are playing a game with the following rules. Initially, they have an integer sequence a1 to an. In addition, Bob has a lucky number a and Alice has a lucky number b. The players alternate turns. In each turn, the current player must remove a non-zero number of elements from the sequence. Each removed element should be a multiple of the lucky number of this player. If it is impossible to remove any elements, the current player loses the game. It is clear that one player wins the game after a finite number of turns. Find the winner of the game if Bob plays first and both Bob and Alice play optimally. And the constraints for this problem, t, the number of test cases, will be between 1 and 10. Uh, the number of elements in our sequence, a, will be between 1 and 2 times 10 to the 5th. Uh, the lucky numbers that uh, Bob and Alice will have will be between 1 and 100. And each of the elements in our list of numbers will be between 1 and 10 to the 9. So let's go ahead and take a look at the examples that CodeChef provided us with, and we'll go from there. So here are the examples that CodeChef has provided us with. The first number is t, the number of test cases, and then each test case has two lines. So the first two lines correspond to the first test case, and the last two lines correspond to the second test case. And on our first line of our first test case, uh, our first number is n, the number of elements, which are then on the second line. These are the values of the n elements, so the five elements in our array A. And then the second and third number on the first line are the lucky numbers of Bob and Alice, respectively. So Bob's lucky number is 3, and Alice's lucky number is 2. And in this game, Alice is going to be the winner. And for the second game, everything is the same except for the lucky numbers. So Bob now has a lucky number of 2, and Alice has a lucky number of 4. So that is the examples. And this problem is actually pretty easy to solve if we just make a small insight about the game. So the first thing to do in order to solve this problem is to figure out how many numbers or elements in our array uh, belong to the three following categories. So uh, which of them are divisible by both of Bob and Alice's lucky number, just Bob's number and just Alice's number. So in this case, um, none of the numbers or elements in our array A are divisible by both because 3 and 2, so the, the lowest number that are divisible by both is 6 and that number doesn't exist. And uh, so that's, that's done for the both category. Bob has one number and that's just 3 and then Alice has two numbers, 2 and 4. So once we have this information, it's pretty straightforward. We just basically look at how many uh, numbers do Bob and Alice have to choose from. In this case, when there are none in the both column, we just basically compare. And if Bob uh, has a greater number of elements, Bob is going to win. And if they have an equal number of elements, Alice is going to win. Uh, and because uh, Bob will choose one, then Alice will choose one back and forth, and then Alice will have chosen the last element, and Bob won't be able to choose anymore. And if Alice has more, then Alice will win. So basically, whoever has more wins, unless if they have the same, in which case Alice wins. Um, and if we look at our second example, uh, where their lucky numbers have changed, Bob now has two, and Alice has four. Uh, so Alice doesn't have any numbers that are just in her category, because Bob's lucky number divides into or Alice's number is divisible by uh, Bob's lucky number. So we have one in the both column, that's the number four, and we have just one number for Bob, which is two. So the way that this is gonna work here is that Bob is always going to remove all of the elements from the both column. So Alice never gets a chance to choose any from the both column if there are any here, because uh, the problem states that you have to remove any number that is a non-zero amount of elements from the list. So uh, because Bob is going first, if there are elements uh, that fit into this both category where they're divisible by both of the lucky numbers, Bob will remove them all. So basically this will just, in certain cases when both is non-zero, it gives Bob an extra turn. Um, so basically we can just compare uh, the count of uh, Bob's only divisible by Bob's lucky number elements versus Alice's lucky number elements. And then uh, in the case where the both is non-zero, um, we will give Bob an extra turn and, and uh, take that into account in our comparison. And with that, we can determine when Alice wins and when Bob wins. So it's actually pretty straightforward. You just have to keep track, sort of go through, figure out what the count of these three items are, 
and then do a comparison of these counts. So let's take a look at our C++ solution. So here's our C++ solution. Most of it is just reading in the input. So first line, we're reading in T, the number of test cases. Then we're looping through our T test cases, reading in N, A, and B, which are uh, the number of elements in our list, and then the two lucky numbers, A and B. Then we're declaring our vector of integers, reading in all of the n integers. And then once we hit, what is this, the sixth line of our solution, we are uh, figuring out the category counts. So we've got both A and B. So note that A actually corresponds to Bob because the lucky numbers A and B corresponds to Alice, which is a bit confusing. I don't know why they did that in the problem, but that's the way it is. And then we have a range-based for loop where we're basically loop looping through and then incrementing whenever we have a category match. So if our element is divisible by both, we increment both. Uh, if it's divisible at this point only by uh, the lucky number A, we increment A. Uh, and if only by B, we increment B. And if it doesn't meet any of these three conditions, we don't increment anything. And then once we finish this range-based range -based for loop, uh, we do this comparison. So if the number of elements that are only divisible uh, by um, the lucky number A, which is Bob's lucky number, is greater than um, the number of elements that are only divisible by Alice's lucky number B, uh, with a minus one if both uh, the number of elements divisible by both is greater than zero. So this is basically giving Bob that extra turn. Um, Bob is going to win. And uh, if this sat uh, condition is not satisfied, uh, Alice will be the winner. So like I said, pretty straightforward. You just have, sort of have to walk through um, the cases of who will win in which situation. And we're looking at one more solution, which is our Python solution. Very similar, just different syntax. So once again, reading in T, the number of test cases, reading in N, A, and B, creating a list of all the values in our list or in our array that we're given. And then we're declaring both A and B and from there we're incrementing we don't have the uh, plus plus post increment uh, operator in python so we have to do a plus equals one and then once we do that we just plug in the same condition that we had before so if a is greater than uh, b minus uh, both greater than zero which will give uh, bob an extra term uh, print bob else print alice and note that implicit in here is sort of the equals equals condition where Alice wins. So A has to be greater than the B minus the both greater than zero. If it's equal, then Alice will be the winner here. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which in this case is going to be big O of T times N, where N is the number of elements in our array that we're given, and T is the number of test cases. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.